Hello, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist? So welcome to another side episode. Today, I'm going to talk about the ideologies of Christian democracy, social democracy, and big tent. These are all terms I'm going to be using when discussing political parties, um, especially when we're talking about Europe. So I figured I just put this video out there just so there's a little bit of a definition out there. Also going to be a filler for between our Antigua and Barbuda episode and Argentina. I think it's probably going to be a little bit of time before that fully gets released. It's a big country, a lot of stuff I have to go over. So yeah, I hope you all enjoy. So the first ideology we're going to talk about is Christian democracy. Now, Christian democracy is an ideology that tends to believe that society should be built around Christian ideas, although not necessarily a theological state. This pretty much means they want a society where Christian ideals like compassion, caring for the poor, and family values are respected, but they don't necessarily want everyone to be a Christian, and nor do they want Christianity to be a state religion, or a religion that everyone has to practice. In practical terms, this tends to mean that Christian Democrats are broadly on the right of social issues, but they tend to be left on more economics issues. Most Christian Democrats tend to fall in the broad center-right category, although you do find some that are more centrist or left-leaning, and then occasionally you'll find some that belong in the Christian right. It should also be noted that Christian Democrats and the Christian right are not the same thing. You can be a part of the Christian right and not be a Christian Democrat, and you can be a Christian Democrat without being a part of the Christian right. The Christian right tends to lean much more into social issues, and they tend to have more right-wing economics. Christian right also tends to be more supportive of authoritarian regimes, while the Christian Democrats generally tend to value constitutionalism and, and fair elections and law and order. Christian Democrats tend to be very, very important in politics in Europe and Latin America. They tend to struggle in other countries. They tend to do very well in Catholic countries. This is mainly because Christian democracy actually came from Catholic social teachings um, and was broadly supported by the church during some of its early years. There was also limited success in Protestant countries. Christian democracy was also influenced by a lot of Calvinist and Lutheran thought. Although Christian Democrats in those countries tend to have a much smaller role in politics. In Orthodox countries, on the other hand, they tend to be non-existent or remain very, very small and on the fringes. So economically, Christian Democrats support the welfare state. It supports a social market economy, which is still capitalist, but also dislikes unregulated capitalism, and are supportive of labor unions and workers' rights. However, regardless, they're still anti-socialist, and they oppose corporate and carbon taxes or just widespread taxation. They're really opposed to laissez-faire capitalism and socialism because they see both of those ideologies as being very materialistic, and they see those ideologies as kind of taking away the soul of the people. On social issues, you'll find they tend to be skeptical of abortion, same-sex marriage, drugs, and prostitution. They're not necessarily opposed to legalization, however, they do want to stop the spread of those things. They tend to be neutral on the most part towards immigration, but they'll want immigrants to assimilate into wider society and kind of incorporate those quote-unquote Christian values. They also are opposed to secularization, and they want to be able to access and show off their beliefs. On the environment, they tend to be in favor of protecting it, but they also tend to be opposed to large sweeping decisions. They tend to be pro-globalization for the most part. They're supportive of the EU and NATO, but more right-wing groups and those more affiliated with the Christian right are more skeptical. They also tend to be fairly moderate in their politics. Most are opposed to radical change, and they tend to like the status quo, or at the very least they only want slow, more evolutionary change. So some of the most important Christian Democratic parties in Europe are the Christian Democratic Union of Germany, the Christian Democratic Alliance, and the Christian Union in the Netherlands. The Italian People's Party, the former ruling party of Italy from the 40s pretty much all the way up to the 90s, and Forza Italia are both Christian Democrats in Italy. There's the People's Party of Spain. There's the Croatian Democratic Party of, surprise, surprise, Croatia. Fine Gael in Ireland. And Civic Platform in Poland. Most of the parties of the European People's Party are Christian Democratic in nature or are inspired by Christian democracy. In Latin America, the Christian Democrats are much smaller, and depending on the country, there might not even be any. But some of the largest ones are the Christian Democratic Party of Chile, the Social Christian Party of Venezuela, the Social Christian Reformist Party of the Dominican Republic, Republicanos and the Social Christian Party of Brazil, and the Social Christian Republican Party and the Social Christian Unity Party of Costa Rica. Elsewhere in the world, there is the Movement for Democracy in Cape Verde, the African Christian Democratic Party in South Africa, the Kateb Party of Lebanon is influenced by some Christian Democratic ideals, and then LACAS slash Christian Muslim Democrats in the Philippines is another Christian Democratic Party. In America, there's actually a Christian Democratic Party, the American Solidarity Party, but as of right now, it remains very, very small. In 2016, it only got 400 votes, and it is likely to remain that way in the 2020 election. 
So next we move on to social democracy. Social democracy is an ideology that's kind of difficult to explain. There isn't really a good definition. A lot of people come up with their own definitions. I think a good way to think about them is they are the middle ground between democratic socialists and social liberals. They are still capitalists, but they are far more willing than other capitalists to criticize capitalism, and they are very supportive of the welfare state, uh, they like high progressive and corporate taxes, and they're big on workers' rights. When people talk about the Nordic model, oftentimes they're talking about the ideal of social democracy. Social democracy is often called capitalism, but with a human face. Economically, they actually are very, very similar to Christian Democrats, although they are far more willing to side with democratic socialists or eco-socialists and will tend to emphasize labor rights, workers' rights, and public ownership. Socially, they'll side with progressives. They tend to be in favor of legalizing and allowing regulation of drugs, abortion, prostitution, same-sex marriage. They often are in favor of greater immigration into the country, and they are supportive of multiculturalism and expanding civil liberties. They tend to want more environmental regulation, and they will push to do so although environmentalists often claim social democrats put environmental issues to the side. Like Christian Democrats, they tend to be pro-globalist. Most are supportive of the EU and NATO, although when it comes to military and foreign intervention, they tend to be more cautious and they oppose war hawks. They also tend to be fairly moderate. Many social democratic parties actually start out as democratic socialists, and then once they achieve mainstream success, they kind of turn in a more social democratic way. Many since the 90s have come to embrace what is known as the third way, which kind of presents themselves as centrist between capitalist and socialist, which have alienated some of the more left-leaning social democrat base. Social democrats tend to be more widespread than Christian democrats. Um, they are found all throughout the world and are a prominent voice in most electoral democracies. In Latin America, there is the Democratic Labor Party and Solidarity in Brazil. There is Democratic Action in Venezuela. There is the Party of the Democratic Revolution in Mexico. And there is the Socialist Party of Chile. Within the Anglosphere, you have the NDP of Canada and the Labour parties of the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. On continental Europe, most are represented by the Party of European Socialists. There is the Social Democratic Party in Germany, Austria, Sweden, and Finland. There is the Socialist Party of France, Bulgaria, and Portugal. There are the Labour parties of the Netherlands and Norway. And there is the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party. In Africa, you have the National Democratic Party of Ghana, you have the Rally for Mali, and then you also have the All Progressive Congress of Nigeria and the African National Congress of South Africa. Both parties are not entirely social democratic, but they are strongly influenced by that kind of thought. In Asia, there is the Israeli Labour Party, there is the Republican People's Party of Turkey, the Social Democratic Party of Kyrgyzstan, the Indian National Congress of India, and the Democratic Action Party of Malaysia. In America, some have argued that the progressive or left wing of the Democrat Party are all quasi-social Democrats. Bernie Sanders has been called out for being a social Democrat for his support of the Nordic model. So finally, we have Big Tent. The Big Tent is not an ideology like the other two. It is more of a descriptor of a type of political group. A Big Tent group is considered a group that has a wide range of political views, but they are all still working towards the same goal. So for example, in Brazil, during the military dictatorship, there was the Brazilian Democratic Party that represented all the opposition towards the government. So this included socialists, social liberals, centrists, and moderate conservatives. Anyone that did not like the military dictatorship was a part of the party. In Russia, the United Russia Party, the leading party of Russia, is considered another Big Tent party. Anyone that likes the status quo, is kind of a part of the party, so you get Russian conservatives, Russian nationalists, centrist, and more authoritarian socialists. Many large political parties tend to be big tent. So for example, both the Republicans and Democrats in America are considered big tent parties because of course Democrats range from democratic socialists, progressives, social liberals, centrists, and even some conservatives. And then Republicans have centrist, conservatives, libertarians, the Christian right, right-wing populist, and right-wing nationalists supporting them. Big tent parties seem to appeal a lot to the center, but they don't necessarily have to. For example, the left bloc in Portugal tries to capture a wide range of socialists, such as anti-establishment social democrats, democratic socialists, eco-socialists, Trotskyist, feminist, and left-wing populists. Big Ten parties are able to appeal to a lot of people, and they're able to capture a very big percent of the population. However, with capturing that many people, there's also problems. Big Ten parties tend to have a lot of infighting, and you can especially see that once leadership elections happen. For example, whenever there's a U.S. presidential election, you see infighting in the Democrats and the Republicans. Just as here, you had the left wing of the Democratic Party backed by Bernie Sanders go against the centrist wing backed by Joe Biden. And so with this infighting, it can lead to the destruction or detriment or break-offs from 
the main party. Big Ten parties are a little hard to pin down and kind of find a good definition for what is and what isn't a Big Ten party, but they're still an important part of the political process and political parties. So yeah, I think that's really it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. My email is whydocountriesexist at gmail.com. Of course, you want to send me thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Anyways, take care.